Hey, Dad. Let's make birdhouses. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is build a prototype. So we're going to measure the pieces and put together a prototype. You're a fast cutter. <laughs> Alright, so what are you doing here? And now we are measuring... <clears throat> measuring we are cutting the pieces down to the width that we want them to be so we just used a one by eight um, piece of pine for this and it was a little wider than what we needed it to make the birdhouses right so we just turn that off on the table saw keep all your fingers there now what are you doing and now we are <clears throat> we are using the speed square to uh, measure the peak so that we can cut it on the angle. It's going to be for both the fronts and the backs of the birdhouse? Yep. So we'll adjust our radial arm saw to match the 45 degree angle that you marked with the speed square. And we can see that we're accurate by lining that up. And you can see it just perfectly matches that same angle. And watch out, you never know when you might have a shop accident. <laughs> <laughs> Tools are dangerous. They're not toys. They're tools, not toys. Okay, so now you want to cut all the way through, pull on through, pull on through, all the way out. Because you're going to have this small triangle of wood that's trapped behind the blade. So if you push that back through, it's going to catch that triangle and it could throw it. Um, and I've, I've had it happen before and um, it'll shoot out of there like a bullet. Somebody's definitely going to get hurt. What are we up to now? Now we're measuring the center point so that we can put the entrance for the birds to go in. Yeah. On the front. All right. And we're going to use a inch and five eighths Forstner bit in order to make this hole. And the reason is that in this area we'll get starlings or other um, less desirable birds that'll get in the birdhouses if the hole's too big. And so we're really kind of after songbirds. Cut all the way through there. That wasn't too hard, was it? Nope. Now what are you doing? And now we are measuring where we're going to put the pilot holes so that we can nail the pieces together without cracking the boards. So we use a scrap piece of the wood. We'll measure in at about an inch and three and a half inches. And then you can use your speed square and we can find the spot that's 
halfway between the three quarter inch and like that. So at three quarters, that's going to work out to be three eighths. So as you mark that, you have all your markings for your pilot holes. <clears throat> Now down at the bottom, we're going to use a larger drill bit because we're going to put in wood screws. So the pilot hole needs to be a little bit larger. So we'll drill those, but on the sides and the tops, we'll use a small one that uh, still allows for those finishing nails to go in nice and snug. Pilot holes are an easy cut. Yep, feels easy. like drilling through butter. Put a scrap board behind it so it doesn't uh, split out the backside. Keeps both sides of the board looking nice. So this peg we'll use as a perch. Basically just put a just find a spot that you like, you think is a good distance down, mark it, and it's off to the drill press. What's the tape on the drill bit for? So we can see how far in we want to... Alright, so peg will fit in that hole. Nice and snug, we'll just tap it in. When we do the assembly and a little, little spot of glue. Now that we have everything ready, we can dry fit the birdhouse. What's dry fitting? It is putting it together without the glue so that you can take it back, back apart. This helps us to, dry fitting helps us to understand that we have our assembly process together and that we know what we're doing. We just use another nail as a as a nail set to get the uh, the finishing the heads of the finishing nails down flush or just a little bit below the surface of the wood without actually marring the wood by getting marks with the head of the hammer on the wood. We looked right at it and didn't even notice. Notice what? Didn't notice that. Yeah. How'd that happen? We put the bottom and the top. I even stuck the peg in there to look what the perch would look like. <sighs> well, it was a prototype after all. We can take it apart. What are you, Hulk or something there? You're just going to rip those apart with your bare hands. Alright, so we used a rubber mallet in order to knock the pieces apart. We worked out the dimensions of the boards and how many of each that we needed, and then it's off to the cutting. This time, in order to make the cutting much, much faster. We used a stop block. Use a stop block. What's a stop block allow us to do? It allows us to cut the pieces the same size more efficiently and faster. It was a whole lot faster this way instead of measuring each one. Um, the one thing that did slow us down though, this uh, radio alarm saw is an older model. It doesn't have a magnetic brake on it. And so in order to keep it safe for Angus, we just let the blade stop spinning between each cut and then moved on to the next one. to our final assembly. We're using some tight bond wood glue. Um, this one should withstand outdoor weather fairly well. 
without having any problems once it gets set. So we're going to use any clamps on these birdhouses? Nope. Hopefully the nails will keep it, um, have some pressure to keep, uh, to keep it together for the glue to dry. Get pretty fast at that after a while. Yep. Did you make sure we put it on the right way? Oh yeah. We also drilled some countersinks on the bottom so that the screw heads would fit down below the surface of the wood so that we wouldn't sort of scratch or mar anything that we set it on. Are you sure you got that going the right way? Pretty sure. There's a little bit of a challenge of hammering on these angles, right? Yep, the boards keep wanting to separate. And the glue just makes it want to, makes it pretty slippery when you want to slide around. We set up a couple of jigs in order to make that part of it a little easier. And you can see a couple of pictures of that at the end of the video. We just used the uh, sliding miter slot on the table saw in order to create a backstop and then used a couple of angle cuts and some scrap wood to create some jigs. And we're just using here just a clear finish. Non-toxic. Should be okay for the birds. This is a wipe-on poly. We can use a cloth just to wipe it on. And this is using a sponge brush. We're also using some painter's triangles in order to keep the finished bottom up off our cloth, give it time to dry. So we can finish the piece all in one shot. It was kind of tricky so that we could get it on there without missing all the finish the finishing off, but messing it up. Was it easy to go on? It's like you're dripping a little there. Yeah. Did that get on your arm? Um, I'm not sure. It definitely got on my hands. I had the challenge of finding a place to put all six of them, get everything finished. How many coats of finish did you put on it? Two. Two? Looks good. Waiting for it to dry? Yep. It's like watching paint dry. Super exciting. Yeah. Well, that took forever. There's the jig. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button. Dad has plenty more cool projects to come.